What's up, guys? My name is Luke. I am the hidden offensive yak here today. <laughs> I am the offensive yak, and thank you for joining me today for episode 11 of our Dyson Sphere program. In the last episode, we got interstellar logistics going, and in this episode, we're going to use them by going to some of our other planets and getting some materials back to the mainland. All right, guys, let's just jump on into it. All right, guys, so before we head off into the stars, we, uh, we first need to actually do a little preparation, okay? Now, we're almost fully prepared, but we need two things. We need Mark III belts and Mark III sorters. Uh, huh, because I do not want to have to use the Mark I versions on the other planets. It'd be way slow. Now, actually, we don't need the sorters. We just need the belts. So we're going to build a little belt factory. Uh, so let's see where a good place for that's going to be. Looks like we don't have much going on down here. Anywhere else we don't have much going on up here. Yeah, I think we'll go use uh, this area right here. Okay. It's actually not too far from where I'm at right now. Perfect! Should be... Is it this area? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So, let's plop down a planetary logistics... Uh, say here. Looks good. And we'll go ahead and get everything powered. And we're going to want this guy to have like 25 drones. One of my favorite days in... Dyson Spear Program is the day that I can quit worrying about how many drones I put in them and just fill them all. <laughs> and believe me, I will fill them all. All right, so we're going to... make Mark III belts. But we're also going to be making Mark IIs and ones. We're going to make them all here. Um, and I don't have a good blueprint for this at least i hadn't i haven't seen one yeah not really seeing one it's too bad um i mean i might have one somewhere And it's possible I could find one, but I think it's going to be just as easy for us to make one. So, to start with, we're going to want... Okay, we'll start with where we're going to end, basically. I'm going to want four of these guys... Working on Mark III belts. So they are going to need... Graphene. Super magnetic rings. And conveyor belts. Mark II. Okay. So the Mark II conveyor belts are going to come in from over here. But the super magnetic rings are going to come in from here, as is graphene. Because those are two things that we have elsewhere 
So, super magnetic rings keep 400 in stock. And graphene keep 500. Now, I'm going to go have to hook both of those up to our planetary system because while we're making them elsewhere, they are not in a planetary logistics center. Okay, and then it's going to be in here, in here, in here. Out here. All right. Well, that's easy enough. All right. There's our th Mark Three belt makers done. Now, for each of these, it takes. It, it's one-to-one. -one. It's one Mark II belt to one Mark III belt. So we need to be making three... So it's going to take... Each of these is going to take three belts per second. Call it. And so we need to be making three belts per second per assembler which, if my math is correct, should be 12 belts per second that we need to make. Now, the Mark II belts are also three per one second, so I just need four things to produce them as well. Okay. And these guys just need what they need green motors which will bring in from elsewhere really are we out could have sworn i had those set up on the system hmm i'll have to take a look at that so green motors And we need Mark I belts. That will come in from here. And then they will go out to here. Now I need 12 per second of these belts, the Mark IIs. So let's see. How about the Mark Ones? It produces three per second as well. So we need four production factories. Call it here. making Mark 1s. Now they need iron ingots and gears. Okay. And it takes... So let's start with the gears. We need one gear per second per one of these. Okay. So four gears per second. It takes one second to make them. So I need four of these guys making gears and go here for it. These guys are going to be making gears. And then we're going to need four iron ingots per second for these and eight iron ingots per second for these. So we're going to need 12 iron ingots per second. 
And how long does an iron ingot take to cook? One second. And we need 12 of them every second. So we are going to need 12 smelters. Uh, let's put the smelters over here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we'll do... Two lines of six. I think that sounds like a good idea. And they'll come out here. Yes, I could have them come out on the same belt, but that's okay. The iron ore will go in here. And then... I'm going to put them into a splitter. This is how I'm going to... Well, actually, I don't even need to do that. I forgot. Combining them, you can literally just combine them. Okay. And it's going to go here. Up here. Over here. Uh, hold on. Yes, because we need the iron up here as well. Right? Yes. Okay. Then, we'll bring these guys out here. Up and over here, and I'm out. <laughs> uh, I set some uh, of these guys aside for another project and they're sitting in a box still and so I was running low okay and so that one will bring the gears up and then this one will bring the mark ones up to here to go into the mark twos And then we're going to put a planetary logistics here. Okay. In. And out. In. Out. And let's have these guys smelting iron. And then as soon as we get the Mark III belts, the first ones we're actually gonna, the first belts we're gonna speed up are gonna be these. Okay, and we'll set this to be iron ore. We want a thousand of it, demand. Also, we'll put 25. Drones in here. Okay, so they're going to come into these guys. They're going to get spit out onto this belt. So then we need input output 
and set to gears. Okay. And then we're going to have input here, input here, output here. That should be everything. Uh, except I need to get these three things up and running. Okay, super magnetic rings, graphene, and electromagnetic turbines. Now, the electromagnetic turbines. I could have sworn we have... Okay. So, we do have them. I know exactly what's happening there. This is what I get for thinking that I'm clever. It stopped producing them because the belt is full. Now they'll all go back into there. And these will all start up again. And then as far as the super magnetic rings go, wow, we're full. Awesome. So let's throw them into a planetary logistics system. This is going to get super magnetic rings, and it is going to supply, and we'll give it 25. And then we're also going to have a belt coming out with super magnetic rings going into here set to just keep two stacks there we go 2500 magnetic super magnetic rings Uh, and the reason I'm doing this, where it's got two stacks, is because I've got some things that are currently set up to be distributed to this way. And until I get everything swapped over to Planetary Logistics, it's easiest just to do that. All right. Now I need my graphene. Which should be over here. Here we go. Right here. And because we already have this guy right here, I'm actually going to use him to supply my graphene. Yeah, because it'll it'll be pretty easy. Uh, I just need to grab a belt, bring it over here, get rid of a couple of these guys, and in there. And this we can actually set up just to take a couple.
There we go. So that way it'll still get its uh, its necessary ones for the <laughs> automation. And oh boy, we got a lot of hydrogen in there. Hmm, okay. Now, where were we setting this all up? Over here? Why, oh, yes. And do we have any Mark III belts? We do! We've got 20 of them already. Okay. Well, awesome. And it looks like we're keeping up with everything. It's perfectly balanced. <laughs> it's not the fastest in the world, but it is balanced. At least, theoretically it is. So currently our problem is the green motors. We're definitely gonna have to get some green motors ramped up here. They're always one of the biggest problems. Yeah, they are just, they're not the fastest by any stretch. But hey, we've got 500 of them already. Okay, so I am going to pause here and I'm going to be back once I let this run a little bit. And I might actually know. We're gonna plop down a green motors thing. Um, mm, let's see. Now here, electromagnetic turbines. Oh, that's a massive one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um we're not we're not there yet. Uh this one's a proliferated turbines. As is that one. Hmm. So we could do separate magnetic coil. And stuff, but mm, these things are just such a pain. Um, here, let me. I'll be right back. I'm gonna take a look on the website and see what there is for turbines, uh, for blueprints. Okay, guys, I think I found one. And we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. But first, I'm gonna have to fill in this little lake here. All right, that looks like it'll work. Okay. So this is from another YouTuber called The Dutch Actuary. Uh, I've never actually seen his stuff, but I mean, his blueprint looks pretty good. So I don't know, go check him out. And I found this blueprint on DysonSphereBlueprints.com. Uh, again, not sponsored, but highly recommend uh, checking them out. So it looks like I need to bring in two belts of iron. That's not a problem. And another belt of iron here. Mm. Ah, and one belt of copper. Okay. 
That is totally doable. Now this one is not tileable. Um, also, we're gonna get rid of that because we're gonna have it going into our planetary logistics. So now most people, when they're playing, they get to the needing more turbines stage way before they ever get to planetary logistics, which is why that, that box is there. I rushed the logistics because I hate not having them okay it is just so much better with them okay so uh we're gonna use this right here uh we're gonna want to keep more like 2000 on hand we're also gonna want to keep say a thousand copper ore because we're gonna be using it for that guy as well. So I'm going to bring out one belt of iron, two belts of iron, one belt of copper. Okay, and it actually looks like I need a third belt of iron. Which is easy enough. I will just change this filter to iron and bring in another belt of copper. But again, I'm out of belts. Uh, do, do, do. They're going to be around here somewhere. Here we go. There we go. That should be enough. Okay, car, iron there, iron here, and copper to there. I think that's everything. So like I said, this one's not tileable, but it's a much bigger than the one I was using, um, being there. Well, technically over there but <laughs> yeah it is a lot bigger I mean it's got four making uh, turbines right here okay as long as, as soon as that gets going I may have to upgrade the belts We will see. And then I am just going to feed it right into here. So these turbines aren't even going to be available to the system. These are going to be solely for upgrading these right here, these uh, belts. Well, technically for these belts, but you know. There they go, in one side, out the other. Perfect. Hey, why did the music stop? I don't know. Uh, how am I on belts? 1300? 
I think that's enough for us to take off to the other planet, which is good because we only got about 15-ish minutes left in the video. Uh, so yes, let me go over here. Luckily, I prepared uh, a little. Uh, okay. So first things first, we're gonna dump this. I'm gonna grab these belts. This, this, foundation. Grab my planetary, my interstellar, these guys. Okay, and then I should be able to just do that. And there we go, okay. Uh, only a couple other things I want to grab. First, I want to grab a little more of this. Boom. And then we're going to go over here. I want to see if I've got any more geothermal. Looks like it. Cool. Okay. And then... Let's land real quick. Let's go ahead and fill up on hydrogen and then we will grab replenishment. Okay, let's go. And there we go. Off to this planet, Leprosis One. Uh, it is possible that somebody has already uh, commented, and the planet will be named after them, but I'm filming this a little in advance. Um, and so it hasn't been named yet. <laughs> I will, uh, if you are the one who's this planet's being named after, I will have replied to your comment and told you what episode that, that uh, is going to get named in. Uh, but we will find out. We are at our max sail speed. Oh, okay. I was going to say, why isn't it speeding up any? That's because we're at our max sail speed of a thousand meters per second. Awesome. Okay. And to the planet we go. Woohoo. All right. Now I just need to find where my titanium factory is. Just over this way. Cool. Okay. And this is set up perfectly, too. Um, I didn't entirely do that on purpose. So, boom. Interstellar Logistics Station. And it is going to suck all of the power out of my grid here for a little bit. Uh, so currently I've got 69 megawatts. So let's drop this down into the 60-ish megawatt range. Uh, one of the things that we are... In fact, I'm going to drop this all the way down to like the 40 megawatt range. These things hold a crap ton. Um, so. Alright. So it's going to be getting and supplying silicon and titanium. And it's going to be supplying both local and remote. Um, you'll see that minimum load of vessels is 100%. So they will only leave if they are full. Um, okay. Well, I think the first thing we're going to do is straight into the system. Let's 
with each of these belts. And then I'm going to get rid of these sorters. I'm also going to get rid of these sorters while we're at it. Okay, and then... Into the system. Now, of course, the vessels aren't taking off yet because I don't have anything set up at home waiting for them to come in. Uh, but I will shortly after I go home and set up another interstellar logistics system there. Okay. So this will get us silicon. It will get us titanium. And we are going to upgrade these belts. Boom. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to take... Oh, I don't have any Mark III sorters. Can I make some Mark III sorters? I don't seem to have the things to get a Mark III sorter on me. That's okay. Uh, for now, I'm going to... Take all of the silicon and throw it in here. And all of this silicon. Just to help the system along. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with the titanium. That's not what I meant to do. I don't really want to drop the titanium, but I, I can't really pick it up. <laughs> uh, do I have any storages on me? No. As you can see, I was really prepared here. Um, here, we'll drop off a few things. Okay, pick up the titanium. Drop off the titanium. All right. Good enough. We got most of it. Now give me my things back. Okay. So that is all we're going to do as far as setup here on this planet, except I do want to add a little bit of geothermal power. So this stuff only works on the lava planets. Like this one. It's got to be in the lakes of lava. And they just produce power from heat. It's pretty awesome. Uh, the machines themselves are pretty expensive, but considering it's infinite free power and pretty good production rates, too. You'll see that not all of these are getting 100% heat. Some of them are 70 or 80% because they're not in a gigantic pool of lava. And that's totally all right. And just like that, we're now producing 124 megawatts. <laughs> uh, approaching one gigawatt. Actually not, but it's fun to say. So yeah, we'll, uh, and they're already connected to the grid. 
which means I can actually turn up uh, uh, transport rate of drones should be unlimited. I can turn this up to like a hundred ish megawatts so that it'll charge faster. Okay, so we've now got titanium and silicon. Good to go. We've still got three million sil silicon there getting mined and how much another six million titanium okay now on this planet is there anything super special there's lots of copper but nothing too s no rare resources okay Let's see how we doing on power we're doing good off we go this time to a brand new planet. We are gonna head off. And as soon as I find it, there it is, Leprosis 4. That is the ice planet in this system. You can think of it like a Pluto. And it is a ways out there. So it's going to be a minute till we get there. But we're going to go there and we're going to set up mines for a couple of things. Um, I don't know that we're going to do the silicon yet. There is a lot of silicon on this planet. Um, and there's a lot of titanium as well. But power is a little harder to get on this planet. We're going to have to go probably with wind generation. Uh, mostly. Luckily, I think I grabbed... I did not grab any wind generators. No, well, that's okay. We can go with solar. I think I grabbed some solar. Yeah, I've got solar. Uh, solar is not as effective on this planet. Luckily, the one thing that we are going to be mining on this planet, which is fire ice, doesn't require any smelting. It is just an ingredient used in recipes. And it's a rare resource, one that we won't always get on every planet, even ice planets. Find and land on a planet rotating on a horizontal axis? Oh, really? Oh, yes, it certainly most is. Most certainly is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, interesting. So let's take a look. Let's find the fire ice vein. There it is. 6.4 million fire ice right here. And there is 6.4 million fire ice in total. So there's only the one vein. And it is basically on the other side of the planet from me. So this is our ice planet. Now these planets are super rocky, very hilly. Um, in fact, some of you may have noticed uh, in, I think it was two episodes ago, uh, when we were building, we were using the foundation and we actually ran out of soil pile. That's just a pile of soil that your mech has access to that allows it to fill in holes. You'll see like all this here, if I do this, it's a giant hill basically. And this adds just crap tons to our soil pile. And so whenever I come to these um, planets, the icy planets, I like to bring a good amount of foundation and just go around collecting a bunch of soil pile so that I don't run into that problem. Soil pile, you'll get some while you're building and whatnot on your main planet but it's much harder to come by. Um, there aren't any gigantic hills that you can go pave on your home planet. So, all right. So now here on this planet, 
we're going to plop down our interstellar logistics system. And we'll throw this on it. And then give me these guys. Now, on this planet, you'll see solar energy is 66%. <laughs> So it's not great. Um, there's also not much in the way of coal at only 500,000 coal. So you can't really rely on that either. This is a planet where you're not gonna wanna do much in the way of big power intensive things like smelting. You definitely don't wanna use this planet for smelting. What you can use this planet for is mining the things. Now it's rotating on a horizontal axis, so I gotta imagine that placing these down here somewhere would probably be best. And I think this is... No, it's not. I want to go one more fault line up. Okay. So here is where we want to start it. And we're just going to go along here as best we can. So I'm gonna be back once I'm done setting these out. All right, guys, I am back. And uh, I'll show you here on the map view. I put in two lines of solar panels down here and up here. Um, as you can see, only this one down here is really in the sun. The one up here is, I mean, yes, almost half of it is lit up, but it's not really getting much in the way of sun. So, um, I still need to connect them together. Uh, so you'll see that actually right now I'm getting <laughs> basically nothing. Um, so let's real quick get these connected up together. Using some of these long range towers these guys are producing much more at 60 some megawatts all right perfect so now we're actually producing enough at 62 megawatts we're using well it's it's using 30 I'll uh, I'll let it charge to like 50 megawatts and we're going to give it some ships, and it's going to be getting fire ice and providing that to the rest of the system. So now it's time for us to actually mine said fire ice. Looks like I was able to get six of them around it. And we're going to go ahead and use a Mark III belt. Uh, for this one. So, in an effort to conserve our belts here and power... We're using Mark III belts for three of them. And then we're going to use Mark I belts to connect in to the others. But 
when you do this, okay, let me show you a problem. It converts this one square into a mark one. So you have to go back and upgrade the one square there. And here, and here, okay? So yeah, so this will conserve belts. Also, the Mark 1s use less power than the Mark 3s use. I think they use power. No, 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 the belts don't. Only the sorters do. Uh, the Mark 3 sorters use less power. Uh, now it looks like, yeah, there we go. So we caught up here. You can see that is not a full belt, which means the Mark 1 is plenty. However, two of these going into one Mark 1 the Mark I belt is not fast enough. So here we go, we're already starting to stockpile it and it looks like, yep, not a full belt, not a full belt. So this setup is functioning just fine. And this guy has power. He's got his fire ice. He's set to local and remote supply. All right, we've officially got fire ice up and running. Let's head home, which should be up here. Well, guys, while we head home, I'm going to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I do really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to comment down below. Uh, you may just happen to get one of the planets named after you, like 6R4 here that uh, subscribed on the very first episode. Um, and if you don't want me to name it, what, whatever your username is, then tell me what you want me to name it, uh, in the comment. Just, uh, make sure it's family friendly, appropriate ish, you know, uh, my channel may not be made for kids, but, I it, it's, you know, generally work safe appropriateness. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to call that an episode guys. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Luke. I am the Offensive Yak. And thank you for having joined me today. And I'll catch you in the next one. Offensive Yak out.